boost your energy in just seven days with the all-day energy diet. Beat exhaustion and fatigue from sunup to sundown with the new Dr. Oz Power Foods. Plus, it's the blow that ignited a firestorm and a national conversation that won't stop. The rise of domestic violence, breaking the cycle of abuse. Coming up next on Dr. Oz. Thank you. So, question for you. Are you tired, exhausted, feeling totally drained? Just like the water down the drain, you're feeling completely depleted, like you just can't even get out of bed. But today, there's help for your exhaustion. A plan to boost your energy in just seven days. Think of your body as a complex system of pipes. Their job, to keep energy flowing to every cell in your body. When you eat the right foods, the energy you need runs through those pipes to key organs in your body, your brain, your gut, your kidneys, and your liver, which can keep you running at full speed all day long. But when you load those pipes with the wrong food, like gluten, sugar, and caffeine, they get backed up, and your energy goes right down the drain, leaving you tired, sluggish, and worn out. But today, I'm making it easy to plug that drain with my new plan to boost your energy in just seven days. Registered nutritionist and trainer Yuri Elkaim is joining us. He spent years feeling drained of energy, but now he says he has more vigor and drive than he thought possible. So how did you conquer your own exhaustion? Well, it's weird because for about 20 years of my life, I had a lot of health issues, digestive issues, eczema, asthma, and, and very low energy, sleeping 10 to 12 hours a night, waking up feeling sluggish, mm. falling asleep after lunch. And uh, it took me about 20 years to really figure out what was going on. And it was really that low energy was a warning sign. My body's screaming for help. And the medical community, unfortunately, didn't have any answers. So I took things into my own hands, went to school, studied all of this stuff in terms of health sciences and nutrition, and became a trainer and nutritionist, and very quickly figured out that it was the foods that I was and was not eating that were at the root cause of my issues and my low energy. So I'm mean, getting 20 years is a long time. Your whole yeah. life you've dedicated to this. How long does it take for the average person to bounce back? You know, we've seen amazing changes in less than seven days' time. And most people are seeing significant improvements in 24 to 48 hours. And it's, there's fundamental things that we'll discuss today that work for anyone. As long as you're a human being on planet Earth, there are fundamental principles that work all the time. How many human beings from planet Earth are there today? <laughs> okay, come on over. Let's get to the ways to boost your energy in seven days. The first tip is to eat alkaline foods to boost energy through your kidneys. So please, if you could define what these alkaline foods are and specifically how do they work to boost our energy? Yeah, so the first thing to understand is that all foods, once metabolized, give off either an alkaline or acidic residue in the body. And that is all kind of filtered through the kidneys. And to keep things simple, plant foods, for the most part, are alkaline forming. So the best, the foundation of our diet really should be greens. Green vegetables like spinach, Swiss chard, kale, broccoli, and I mean pretty much any plant food is gonna give us what we're looking for. I know you have nuts and seeds, which I eat a lot of. Absolutely, so uh, almonds, pumpkin seeds, tremendous. And even some of the, the, the things like mushrooms that a lot of us don't think about as yeah. much, you put in this alkaline group. Absolutely. Let, let me if I can explain Yuri's theory. It's, it's one I've heard before. It's very hard for organized medicine to appreciate this alkaline acid difference, but it does seem to correlate with the foods that are better for us. So here's the concept, you eat foods, as you eat foods, your kidneys have had a very important job. They've got to purify these nutrients, get rid of the waste that you don't want. So let's say you take some non-alkaline foods into your body. No, we didn't show you what they are, but specifically they're things like meats and, and dairy, processed foods tend to be non-alkaline. As you take the non-alkaline food into your body, your kidneys have trouble dealing with it. It actually creates a sludge, literally. They're working on fumes, working as hard as they can. They get, sort of get rid of that sludge, that, that acid that the body doesn't want. The kidneys aren't happy when this is what's coming out of them. In fact, what the kidneys want coming out of them is the stuff that comes out when you eat alkaline foods. That's the concept, and it looks like this. Now compare the two. Kidneys working well, like a you know, highway at Absolutely. two in the morning versus the sludge that I'm showing you here, where really it's difficult to get anything through the kidneys, and they're huffing and puffing with you know, basically bubbles coming out. So how much of these alkaline foods do we need to go from this scenario to the healthier one? Well, the whole idea is to eat as many as possible. And the, you know, the basic recommendation is eight to 10 servings of vegetables and fruit per day, but most North Americans are getting less than two. Mm -hmm. So I like to, to suggest you know, get as many as you can, at least one with every meal that you have throughout the day. Get yeah, the servings of fist. Serving as a fist, you know, in a really simple way is to just make a smoothie in the morning, for instance, just throw some of that in a blender, 
and you're all good to go. All right, the next tip is to use sprouts to boost vitamins and minerals in your body. And yes. overall, moving away from kidneys now. Get, walk us through some of these. So sprouts are amazing. Um, you know, nuts and seeds and, and legumes and beans very often, they're dormant. And when we see them kind of on a shelf or in a package, and when we hydrate them, by adding, basically by kind of putting them in water and letting them sit there for, for a day or two, it allows that to germinate, to come to life. And that's what we see with these sprouts. And what we've seen uh, scientifically is that when you sprout like a, a chickpea or a lentil, the protein, the minerals and the vitamins all increase in their bioavailability, which basically means that our body is able to better absorb those nutrients and there's more of them for us to take in. And if we have more of that, then our cells have more of the basic ingredients to produce the energy we want. I knew I was right to soak my nuts. That's why I do it. <laughs> now, now I know why. There you go. <laughs> All right, next we're gonna load up on energy fats, yes. and this is for brain power. And again, I, this concept of energy fats is something I would not thought of. I, I understand healthy fats for the heart. Please, if you can, define how these might actually help our brain a little bit more effectively work. Yeah, for sure. Well, as you probably know, the, the same fats that are good for your heart are also good for your brain and for most of the cells in your body. So we have some really good fats, and I think a gener as a general statement, I'd love the audience to understand that the right fats are really good for us. There's nothing wrong with fat. The wrong fats are the problem. And the reason all of these are important is because they are the major building blocks that surround all of our cells. And let's move to the organ that's closest to the brain for most of us, which is our gut. And you argue that to keep your gut energized, you want to eat a, a, a plate that is 50% raw food. Yes. Um, the whole idea is that they are very high in food enzymes. And these enzymes allow our body to digest foods more effectively. And the reason that's important for our energy is because digestion is such a labor and, digest, or, um, a labor and energy intensive process. Yeah. So think back to Thanksgiving dinner. Didn't feel very energized afterwards. No. You know, um, <laughs> so you know, the whole idea is to get more fresh food in so that our body doesn't have to work as hard to digest it. All right, so we've energized everything, but we, uh, we need a wake-up call, something that will get you going. Sure. And uh, you're using lemon water, which I've heard about in many different uh, arguments, but you yeah. have a more specific reason why it might wake up your organs. Yeah, so lemon water is awesome. So lukewarm lemon water, first thing in the morning, is going to help rid our liver of a lot of toxins that have built up overnight as well as throughout the day. And that's important because if we feel sluggish a lot of times, it can be built up toxins and stuff that's kind of sticking around that we don't want. That's going to help flush things out of our body, which is great. But also, uh, before a meal, there's a really cool digestive hack where simply adding a bit of lemon to your water beforehand can help your stomach kind of come back to life and produce more stomach acid to help you better digest your food so you can reap those nutrients and have the energy you want. You know, it's very hard uh, as a Western trained doctor to figure out if these are the right words to describe what's happening, but it is remarkable how many different cultures all around the world, yeah. how many different programs start their day with lemon water Absolutely. or use it in conjunction with meals you're just saying. And I gotta say, there has to be some wisdom there if I keep seeing it over and over again. And frankly, just doing it makes you feel a little better, which is why I think it, it makes some sense. Absolutely. Okay, finally, we got something that has nothing to do with food at all, but it's not that painful, but I want you all to help me with this. You all wanna do this? Can I get help from the audience? All right, so this is an energy move that we're gonna use to boost circulation. So you're gonna walk us through this. So we're gonna start sitting. Yep. Don't fall over the banisters and railing back there. Okay. okay it's <laughs> So the whole idea here is that we spend so much of our time sitting, and sitting is really the new smoking. So if we want to feel more energetic, emotion comes from motion. So if we're sitting down all day, we're not going to feel very upbeat. So a simple way to do things is obviously move around. But if you're at the office or at home, all you have to do is from a seated position is stand up, and we're going to do what's called a jump and pump. So we can essentially just kind of jump up in the air and do a little fist pump. And it sounds, it yeah, seems- Don't jump up there, just go up, okay? Yeah, you can just they'll, kind they'll of- They'll do it too. You right. can kind of just extend up and do a little fist pump with a little yeah, or something to yeah. just jazz All right, let's do it, up. let's do it. Everyone down, ready? On three. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Jump. Yeah. One more time. One more time. Let's go. There you go. Yeah. Oh. All right. Woo. Yuri, thank you very much. To find out more on Yuri's plan and read an excerpt from his new book, The All Day Energy Diet, which has the recipes on it as well. Go to DrOz.com. I'll be right back. Coming up, it's the blow that ignited a firestorm and a national conversation that just won't stop. The rise of domestic violence spiraling out of control, breaking the cycle of abuse. The big conversation is next. The new dangers of walk-in cosmetic surgery. The three procedures you should never do. Plus, new information on microwave safety. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow.
Today's big conversation, domestic abuse. Domestic abuse has been in the headlines ever since NFL player Ray Rice was seen hitting his then fiance in an elevator and it started a national conversation that won't stop. It was the video that stopped the nation in its tracks. Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice punching his then fiance, now wife, so hard that she was knocked unconscious. 27-year-old Ray Rice tonight is a football player without a team. The video ignited a firestorm and led to two more bombshell revelations of domestic abuse within the NFL. Carolina Panthers defensive end Greg Hardy has been placed on the NFL's exempt list. Vikings running back Adrian Peterson has been indicted. Even the White House has gotten involved, saying the NFL has to, quote, get a handle on players who commit child abuse and domestic violence. Overnight, the stigma and fear surrounding domestic abuse seemed to disappear as women flocked to social media to tell their stories. Twitter exploded with women sharing their experiences over the thorny decisions victims face. Domestic abuse is one of the most underreported crimes in America, despite the fact that one in four women will become a victim of domestic violence in their lifetime. Today, I brought together two experts in the world of domestic abuse. Addiction specialist Dr. Drew Pinsky and Leslie Morgan Steiner, a former victim of domestic abuse and author of the New York Times bestselling memoir, Crazy Love. So Leslie, you've been through this. Having experienced it, what do you feel when you see that video of Ray Rice hitting his then fiance? You know, it just takes me back to my own story. I was 22, I just graduated from Harvard. I fell in love with this wonderful man who was also an Ivy League grad and worked on Wall Street. And he first, I thought he was my soulmate, and then he choked me five days before our wedding. And I thought- Before the wedding? Mm-hmm, five days before, but I thought it would happen only once. I thought he just had cold feet. And then he beat me twice more on the honeymoon. Mm. And for the next four years, until I had the strength to leave, he held a loaded gun to my head, pushed me downstairs, and it was a, a terrifying marriage of torture and control behind closed doors. So when I see the video, it takes me back to how, how much worse domestic violence actually is than anybody, including I, could have ever have imagined. And I see in Janae Palmer Rice a terrible mix of love and fear, mm-hmm. which is exactly what I felt for my husband during the marriage. Do you feel that this event that's occurred, this fireball with the NFL, is a watershed moment? in domestic abuse? I absolutely do. I, there's a lot of hope coming out of it, um, even though it's a terrible story. Because so many people within the NFL and in the media and, and people on social media are sharing their stories about what it means to be a survivor. And also, I feel like sponsors are finding their voices too and saying, you know, th- you know we're not going to support the NFL, which has a billion dollars in sponsorship money, unless you say that this is totally rep- reprehensible and domestic violence has no place in the NFL or anywhere in our society. I'm going to come back if you don't mind. I, I do want to ask you more about mm-hmm. why you stayed. But, Drew, yep. why do women in violent relationships, if, I, if, if my daughter told me that her fiancé tried to choke her five days before the wedding, I know exactly what I would do. Yep, she wouldn't tell you. Because there's fear, there's shame, they feel responsible. It's interesting watching you react to it. You seem so disturbed by Leslie's story, but her story's not that uncommon. You would be shocked how common this is. And they hide it because they feel as though they're somehow responsible for it often. And they're they're shamed and they're embarrassed. So to that point, let me give some information that we've gathered for the show. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, listen carefully, 85% of women who leave an abusive relationship return. They go back. Leslie, why? Why is that number so high? You know, it takes on average seven attempts for a victim to leave. And I was very typical in this way. I would leave and then come back. Sometimes I would come back 10 minutes later because I loved him. And I was, I was caught in a psychological trap that felt like love and a strange mix of pity. And they often say that they love us so much that they're going to kill themselves or us if or we Or their do children, leave. the right. children, or leave them alone. And, or there's no one, or some, they go the other way and say, you're not worth anybody else. They coerce. Right. We used that word intensity a couple times, and I can see that being confused with love, but then this issue of power comes to bear. It seems more like a power play. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of coercion. There's a lot of loss of autonomy for the individual. Their agency as a person is not valued. It's not respected. It's ground down to nothing. You've all heard about this on social media, right? I'm I'm assuming because it's been everywhere. So it's been a cathartic process. I think there's been healing forms out there. In fact, there's two hashtags in particular that received over 10 million tweets. The first is hashtag why I stayed. The other is hashtag why I left. Leslie wrote an op-ed article for the Washington Post, and if I can, I'm gonna share the reasons that you've given. 
Here are the reasons, as you stayed. I thought I was the only woman who could help him face his demons. Mm. In between the terrible times, he still made me laugh. And the biggest one of all, the third one, I loved him. You know, it's the single most common question that I get and that all victims get is, why did we stay? Why would anybody stay? Why would I marry somebody who choked me five days before the wedding? Why would I stay for so long when he was treating me terribly? And I did love him, and I was afraid of him, and he had been terribly abused as a little boy, and I wanted to show him what real love was all about. And I think it's incredibly important not to blame the victims who we're seeing so much about now, the, the spouses and girlfriends of these NFL players who are staying. Don't blame them. Don't demonize them. Um, they, they are experiencing things that so many people from the outside will never understand, and they deserve dignity and respect, but they also need to be told that it is potentially lethal for them to stay because yes. one, in, one in three women are killed every day in this country because of domestic violence. And it's, remember, it's, it's very, you said something very interesting, Leslie. It, it, she, she identified it with and felt she had a special insight into that injured child that she was going to take care of yeah. and nurture and bring out, yeah. when in fact what she had was an abusive, coercive adult on her hands, and you can't let that be confused with what you think you see the victim who was abused as a child, who's now a coercive, violent adult. A few days ago, Commissioner Goodell, uh, at the national press conference, he said that he was sorry for getting it wrong with Ray Rice, that the NFL will get better going forward. Do you believe that it'll actually nudge us in the right direction in this conversation? I do, absolutely. And I think it was a watershed moment when he said, you know, we, we screwed this up because we didn't listen to women. To have the bastion of masculinity, the NFL, say that. Mm -hmm. It really, when I heard it, I felt a lot of hope in my heart. I always tell people the show is about hope, but this is a situation where I actually have to temper that a bit. Dr. Drew, mm. is it possible, if you're in a relationship like Leslie was, that you'll be able to have a therapy that's successful at there solving can it? Be. There can be, but both people need to be equally involved and committed to the therapy. But if both people want to get better, they can, but it takes time. They have to be treated. And I think the most important thing I did was to leave and say, yeah. this is unacceptable, and to try to give him a wake-up call. Um, that, it, that it wasn't my fault and that he needed to take responsibility. Why did you finally leave? Because there was one final beating where it was very clear that he was going to kill me. And the police intervened and neighbors intervened and it really broke through my denial. And I realized that it was a choice between him and me. And even though I loved him and our relationship was, was intense and intoxicating, that it was a choice between him or me. And the only reason I'm here today is that in that moment I chose me. So for the women at home who are watching, who are yeah. suffering from domestic abuse, because so many of you are, and they don't know what to do. Yeah. What do you have to say to them? Well, I would say you're not alone, number one, and because this is a very common thing. It's not your responsibility, and it's not love. And reach out. Reach out. There are women out there willing to help. Every community has tons of resources. There are always, community, there are always domestic violence resources in every community. Reach out for those. And I think you actually have a resource to provide them today as well. well let me share that with everybody. Yeah. I, can, can I say one sort of overarching concept here? Unless you're acting in self-defense, I don't think a man should ever forcibly touch a woman. And I respect, I really do, and you brought a lot of clarity to me, to Leslie, about why this is such a difficult decision for everybody involved, including the people who are watching. But let me be clear about this. If you see this happening and we don't speak up to defend women involved in these abusive relationships, we are being cowards. That's why we need to get engaged. Now, if you are, or someone you need, uh, know needs help, you can dial the National Domestic Violence Hotline. The number's on the screen. We'll be right back. Thank Thanks very much. Coming up, take a stand for good health. Dr. Oz is on a mission to transform your life with simple, easy, free steps that can have a huge impact. Are you guys ready to take the first step? Yeah! And the simplest step of them all? That's coming up. So last week, we started bringing healthy back. But sometimes getting healthy can seem, well, overwhelming. Let's face it, you got no time, we have no energy or money, and you know what? There's the fear that you just can't do it. Today, that changes. Because all season long, I'm giving you simple, easy three steps that can have a huge impact on your health. Today, I'm actually giving you the simplest step of all that might just have the biggest impact. So, take a step with me. Every journey starts with a single step. Same is true about health. I wanna know what's your first step to get healthy. Let's get going. From subway steps, to stadiums, yeah! the California coast, and the climb Rocky made famous. Philadelphia is ready to take a step with you! I canvassed the country to find out how folks all across America are taking their first steps. Are you guys ready to take the first step? Yeah! Towards better health. 
What's your one step this year to get healthier? Uh, I'm going to try eating out less and making food at home. Instead of the elevator, take the stairs. My first step is to meditate at least 20 minutes per day. Everyone wanted to step up for something different. What's your one step to get healthier this year? Eat less ice cream. I love it. It's a great step. It's Let's do great. it. First step. Eliminate all the white foods from my diet. Drink more water. Stop smoking. Relax and be present. Stay off statins. You gonna get to cut down your statins? I don't want to take them at all. Oh, I yeah. love that. Come on, right. yeah. One step at a time. Yeah. I'm trying to do 10,000 steps a day. You got pedometer or something? I got my pedometer oh, right, right here. Right there. Yeah. Come on, yeah. let's do it. So what are you going to change your life to get healthier? Watch more Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can step up and join our call to action online. Every day, DrOz.com will feature a brand new step you can do to boost your health. They're all simple and easy. Join the fun by taking pictures and posting to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And use the hashtag OzStep and you might be featured on the show. How are you going to take your first step? you on the top of your to-do list. Venetia is joining me to help you show me and you, everybody else, how to do that. So you've decided you want to make a change in your life. When do you think you lost control of your health? When did that start? Well, Dr. Oz, I think I lost control after I had my kids. Mm -hmm. I have two kids, um, my youngest being five, and I work all day. I'm a single parent. I'm going to school, so it's really hard for me to stay active. What scares you about making a change? Well, starting anything new is very scary. You know, bad habits die hard, and it's always very overwhelming and daunting when you don't know everything of what you're supposed to do. We're going to overcome all those obstacles. You know, I know it's hard to make a change. This is true for all of us here. But I'm about to give you one step, one simple little step. It's going to have a huge impact on your health, surprisingly big impact. It's free. It's simple. You curious? Yeah, absolutely. You all interested? Yeah. It's called standing up. Oh. <laughs> Sounds almost dumb, doesn't it? Stand for me, if you don't mind. You know, in fact, I want to practice what we're preaching. Everyone in the audience, please stand. Everybody at home, up, 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 up at home. Everybody, control room, you guys never stand. Let's go back behind there. <laughs> control room stands. <laughs> Venetia, you're standing. You yes. feeling pretty good about this? Yes. Now, the question is, why would something so obvious, so simple, be so important to our health? How much time do you think you sit a day? Uh, maybe like 12 hours. 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> You know, a lot of us don't actually know this, but it turns out that the average person sits between 8 and 11, 12 hours. So you're not too far off. Oh. And that's when we're awake. When you're sleeping, of course, no one's standing. Right. So we spend most of our lives either on our back or on our bottoms. And that state of sitting wreaks havoc on our health. Our bodies were never designed to do that. And I literally want to make the point that standing up will actually allow you to stand up for your health in a way that we never thought possible before. So I'm gonna demonstrate this for you. I had five audience members not stand. They're the only ones in the entire audience, and hopefully in America watching this right now, who are not standing, they're sitting. And they're gonna demonstrate why standing is the simplest, best, easiest step. So if you don't mind, we'll get our first guest up. Karen, is it? Yes. Karen, hi. stand up. And what's your tip? It stabilizes glucose. Now why would that be? It turns out when you stand up after a meal, you dramatically accelerate how fast your blood sugar comes back to normal. That helps with diabetes. These are things that if I had a medication that did that, I'd give it to you. But literally getting up to do the dishes, to take a slow walk around the block, a few stairs, makes a difference to your blood sugar. Let's move on. And what's your tip? Burns fat. You guys interested in burning fat? <laughs> of course. Yeah, and I can talk, there are some foods and some things that we think may actually turn on a fat burning enzyme. Mm -hmm. Standing does it automatically. You own it and it's yours because you get to stand whenever you want. It literally kicks your metabolism into high gear to allow you to burn fat. Cynthia, take it away. Eases pain. If you stand with the right posture, it distributes your weight evenly across your pelvis, your belly area, your, your upper chest, your legs, everywhere. So it takes a lot of the heat off your lower back. When you sit, you literally, you, your back becomes a C. That's what you naturally do when you sit. Mm -hmm. When you stand, you've got to be more of that natural S shape that we all want to have. Next up is CN. How are you? Hi, Dr. Uh -huh. Your tip is that it? Burns calories. Everyone loves burning calories. Right. Turns out that one hour standing, simple hour standing, can burn 50 calories, which means over the course of a year, you burn away about five pounds. Simple to do. All you got to do is get in your feet a little bit more. And finally, Amanda, the last tip. Helps you live longer. The most important tip of all. 
Folks have never thought about this as being important. It reduces the chance, and studies have shown this, that if you stand, you reduce the chance of heart disease and of cancer. Can you just imagine? Just think about that. Something as uniquely human as standing changes the chance of us dying from the two biggest killers of humans, heart disease and cancer, which means, of course, you live longer and you enjoy life better at the same time. Thank you all very much. <laughs> but you still got to stand. I want them all standing. So here's my homework assignment for America. So I'm asking a very simple favor, but it's going to save a lot of lives. I'm asking America to stand for one hour more a day. One hour more a day. Do it however it works in your life. You know, but I just don't want anybody sitting for more than an hour at a time. Even if you get up for just five minutes, mm -hmm. that will, over the course of a day, give you that extra hour that I'm asking for. Now, let me give you some ideas to make this practical. Are okay, you ready? Yes. I'm going to put them up there, that board. First idea, talking on the phone. We can do that when we're standing pretty easily, right? Yeah. You can do it while you're doing your makeup. Just stand up at the mirror. You can watch the show while you're standing or in the commercial breaks. You can do it while you're commuting to work, riding in a train or in a bus. You can do it in meetings. You can do it at your desk if you're sitting all day long. All you've got to do is get up every hour for five minutes and just walk around. Which of these activities do you think you could do? Um, all of them. <laughs> all of them? <laughs> yeah. You didn't even get more than an hour out. <laughs> yeah, I can't really do all of Folks, them. Folks, it's doable if we can just automate it into our lives. In fact, to remind you, I'm asking everybody, just take your, your smartphone, set an alarm once an hour, just to remind you, if you haven't walked, just get up for five minutes, just a little buzz to take mm -hmm. you there. Audience, you've all been standing for a long time. Are you feeling okay? Everybody at home, I can't ask. How about Scott? You're in the control room. How long has it been so far? Well, we're doing okay. Nobody's fallen over yet. We are been standing about five minutes and seven seconds. So we got our five minutes in. All right. So there's a place we're going to make on DrOz.com where all these steps are going to live from now on. It's as simple as taking a bath or switching out a drink you might have had. It makes a huge difference. So there's a logo I'm going to put up on the screen right now. And that logo, if you look on it, just click on that little logo. Everything you need for those simple little steps will be there. Just take that step and I'll be here for you. I also want to hear from everybody. So send me your pictures of how you're improving your life with simple steps. You can send them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just hashtag OzStep. And I'm going to put some of the favorites on our website and on the show. Now, I thought I'd start it off by giving you a step that someone took this morning. That means a lot to me. Are you ready? Put her up there. There she is. There's Philo. Aww. There's my granddaughter. She's getting her legs up. It's small steps like this. We celebrate them when we're infants. Let's celebrate them when we're adults as well. Post pictures of yourself taking steps towards reclaiming your health or climbing famous steps around the world. Let's make us all happen. Together, we'll climb. Be right back. Next, banish your bloat. I know what it looks like. What does it feel like? When I take this Spanx off, it's going to pop for sure. <laughs> New ways to say bye-bye to your bulging belly. The foods to eat. That's not bad. He's being polite. To deflate your tummy. Stay tuned. The new dangers of walk-in cosmetic surgery. The three procedures you should never do. Plus, new information on microwave safety. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. If you ever felt so bloated that you worry that your pants just pop, then it's time to pay attention. What could be causing that unbearable pant popping sensation? Well, I think it's the bad bacteria growing inside of you. And like you, my audience has too much of that bad bacteria. See, there's some good guys, some greens in here, but lots of bad bacteria as well. Tara from our audience is gonna join us. I understand you are fed up with the bloat. I am, you can see it from here. I've got my Spanx on, I'm sucking it in, <laughs> and look at that. It was a feel like. I know what it looks like. What does it feel like? Like, it just wants to pop all the time. And <laughs> let me tell you, when I take this Spanx off, it's going to pop, for sure. <laughs> When's it at its worst? Is it the middle of a show? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, but also at night, after I've had all my you know, meals all for the goodies. day, it's, it's the worst at night. Well, you've come to the right place. We brought in a wonderful author. Uh, she's an integrated nutritionist, Kathy Swift. And she says in just four weeks, her diet can help banish your bad bacteria and get rid of your bloat. Can we get started? Yes. All right, welcome, Kathy, to the show. Now, she says the first two weeks are about removing you, the big three. So what are the big three we're getting rid of? The big three, hi, are sugar, the tsunami of sugar that we have in processed foods, also the artificial sweeteners, gluten, and dairy. It's going to really help banish your bloat. What's going to be the hardest for you, Tara? 
Bread. Bread is bread. my friend. I know. It's addictive. It yes. is your friend. It's everyone's friend. There's 32 slices in a loaf. It's fantastic. All right, Kathy, we've given up all the big three. You're making Tara's life uh, miserable. What are you going to oh. give us back in place of it? Oh, we're going to get lots back. You're going to love this. Okay. The key to the plan is built around fiber, fats, and protein. The fiber in colorful vegetables and fruits is going to feed your good bacteria. Okay. Very, very important. And healthy fats in nuts, seeds, olives, avocado helps you feel full longer. Okay. And we've got that beautiful protein here. We have eggs and fish and lean poultry and beef is also included. You also have wine. Is that included? Is that yeah. a protein? Yeah, we're sharing this. <laughs> You keep talking about that stuff. So, so is, is wine a protein? If you enjoy some wine, you can have up to two glasses a week. Oh, a week. Oh, okay. okay. And you can also keep that cup of coffee in the morning if you'd like. Oh, back here. through the wine. All right, audience, now if we do this at the end of the second week, we're going to change, let's say that part of the audience there, you all have good bacteria now. All right, everybody else, hold, let me see what you guys still are at. So we've gotten rid of a fair amount of the bad bacteria. It's getting to be more of an even battle over there. That's after the first two weeks. So this week three of Kathy's Blow program, we're going to move on to reintroducing more good bacteria. So explain what the thoughts are here, Kathy. Okay. Well, now that you've built up a more resilient digestive tract, it's time to play dietary detective. So we're going to begin to experiment and reintroduce some foods. Okay. Okay. All right. And we're going to start with some fermented foods. Okay. You like fermented foods? Do you know what they are? No. Yogurt. Yogurt's one. We know that one. I don't like yogurt. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we've got some other things for you. Okay. So uh, there are a couple of things here people have heard of, you know, sauerkraut and pickles. I'm just going to point out that uh, tempeh. Tempeh. Is, yeah, have you had a tempeh before? No, I haven't. This will change your life. Maybe not for yeah. the better, but we'll find out. But you have fermented carrots. You have fermented beets now. You can make these many different forms. That's not bad. It's great She's in being stir polite. fry. You could have a tempeh Reuben, which would be wonderful. <laughs> a little sauerkraut on it. Here, put, put, I'm not going to force you to eat that because I know <laughs> eating tempeh by itself may not be pleasurable, but all these foods actually, uh, I, I personally enjoy, but they can be mixed in different ways with foods you're more comfortable with. But let me show you why it's so important. Okay. This is vitally critical. You stand right over here. You get to be dairy, sugar, and gluten. This is the food that you will need to digest in your belly. Okay. And this is the intestinal tract that so many of our audience are struggling with. Now I want to, sh if you don't mind, take that dairy, that sugar, that gluten, pour it in there. Those are the regular digestive juices. When you pour them on the snowball in your belly, you want this to dissolve, go away, so your intestinal system speeds up. You get rid of that bloat that we've been talking about. Pour it all in there. How'd you do with that? Mm, it's still there. It's still there. That bloat's still there. Now I, show off that I am, am taking some of the fermented foods which have probiotics in them naturally. And watch what happens when you eat the kinds of foods that I'm talking about, right? All of a sudden, that big bloat begins to disappear literally, dissolves away into nothingness. Wow. And that's what you want. You want all that stuff melting away. And this is important because if you get the right bacteria in there, it'll be working for you. So audience, let me see your signs again. This time the middle guys, you guys are all okay. There we are. Much, much better. Now we only have one little last section left. This is week four now. That We'll take care of you guys over there. Okay, explain to us, if you don't mind, Kathy, what's the thought around week four? Well, this is very, very important because this is really about how we're living our lives, or like I like to say digesting our lives. It's about the stress and our way of living. So I want you to eat mindfully. I want you to eat slowly and integrate mindful practices into your life that can be really, really helpful for your digestive tract. All right, audience, let me see all green now. Everybody, the entire, see everybody all over the place. This is the goal for us. You get rid of all those bad boys, you keep the green bacteria up in front. You can find the information we covered today on DrOz.com. And Kathy's full plan is in her new book, The Swift Diet. We'll be right back. Coming up next, are you getting the most out of your lemons? Put the zest to the test. Easy, beneficial remedies everyone can make with a simple squeeze of a lemon. Dr. Oz's new uses for everyday things. So why not use a natural remedy? Next. No matter where I look on social media, one of the most popular, talked about, tweeted, pinned, and posted topics that I cover on the show are new uses for everyday things. So I'm gonna give it a permanent home on the program. And today, we're focusing in on new uses for lemons. 
Lemons are one of the most requested home remedy items I gather because they are easy to get and they only cost about 25 cents each. So let's get to the first one. We have a good health approach. Lemons as a nausea remedy. Sarah's here and she posted this new use for lemons on Twitter. She said, hey, Dr. Oz, I am pregnant and finally found the answer to morning sickness. Well, you are definitely pregnant, Sarah. What, yes, what, do, you, what do you do? September 30th. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Can we deliver you on the show? Sure. Everyone tune in September 30th. We're delivering Sarah on the show. <laughs> so how did you make the discovery that lemons would help with nausea? Um, well, during my first trimester, I really suffered from morning sickness, and I completely lost my appetite. Uh, one of my friends recommended I try lemon water. So I tried it, and it, it, it worked. It, it helped me so much with the nausea, um, I started drinking it every day. So now I swear by it. So give me the little recipe here. Okay. So you squeeze a half a lemon into hot water. Drop the lemon in. Wait, wait, wait. Just see if it's hot. It's hot. Okay. A little bit of sugar. And that's it. Easy. Give Simple it a try. Oh, for a busy mom. All right. And you... It's very palatable. Are you surprised that this worked for your nausea? I was. You know, I'm not. I'll tell you why. The part of the brain that's most connected to the nausea center is the smell center. So if you like the smell of lemons, and I gather you do. Of course. It, it probably should work. So if you like the smell of something, you ought to use it to overwhelm what's making you nauseated. So I'm very happy you found that. Congratulations and good luck. Right, let's get to another new use for lemons. This is in the area of lemons as a deodorant. Now I want you to check out this video that Melissa posted. You want to know my secret? I use lemons as deodorant. Anybody want to smell my armpit? Hey, you want to smell my armpit? What does that smell like? Wow, that's refreshing. Don't I smell so good? Yes. I do, right? It? You want to smell my armpit? Not bad. So Melissa is here. We really are very proud of your armpits. <laughs> Thank you. They don't smell. Can I try? You want to try? Go ahead, smell. You're right. They don't smell at all. Whatever possessed you to try lemons under your arms? Well, my doctor knows that I'm into homeopathic remedies, and he said, you, have you ever heard of this? And I said, no. So I thought I'd give it a try. And here I am on the Dr. Oz show, giving it a try. <laughs> show, show me how to do it. <laughs> it's very simple. You just take a lemon, cut it in half. Whoop. That's it. Just apply it like that? Just apply it like that. Not after, you wanna try? Well, I, have, I have a lot of hair on my arm. Is that okay? <laughs> Does it work on the hair? Why not? Yeah, it feels pretty good, actually. I yeah. don't recommend it after you've just shaved, though. That well, would that burn. would burn. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you know what? I got to say, I get, looked into this. I never thought about it before, but it makes a lot of sense. It's a chemical-free alternative to a deodorant, and it could be the answer for a lot of folks who don't want anything else on their body. We have too many foreign things in us anyway. We do. And the other nice thing about it, it gives you that nice lemony smell, and it might actually not just mask the odor of bacteria, it can actually kill the bacteria. It does. So you don't make the odor in the first place. Right. Nicely done. Thank you. All right. Let's get to one more use for lemons. This is lemons as a dandruff treatment. Now, I admit, when I first saw this on Instagram, I was intrigued, and I had to meet the lady who posted. Here's her image. It's Roberta, and she's saying, before and after my dandruff solution. So why lemons as a dandruff? Why not shampoo? Grandmother. Well, chemicals, too. Us as women, we process our hair all the time. Yeah. So why not use a natural remedy, right? My grandmother's the one that taught us this, and it's, it works. It literally works. Does it work? It looks clean. Yeah. Was it okay before? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this remedy for a long time. Right, well, show so, me how to do it. I okay. want to try this. All right. So what you, what you do is you take a cup of water, put it in there. Put in a little squishy bottle. That's what you want. We can get all that in there. Let's just do that. Let's That's perfect. It, right? And then you take, actually, we need to do the lemon. You want to pour that in there for I'm, me? I'm good at pouring lemon okay, juice. Okay, good. Lemon juice goes in there. Perfect. Then you cap it up and cap mix it up. Cap it up, mix it up, and then we're going to walk over here and I'll show you. you oh, you brought a friend. I this is a well-prepared <laughs> tweeter. Good luck. All right. Thanks. Here, so I'll manage the water for you. There you go. Just lift your right. water. And then what you do is you just put it on your scalp and you massage it in. Just massage it in like that and leave it in for 10 minutes. You know what? Sit up for one second. I want yeah. you to see. So how do you actually put it in there? Just right in the scalp, like this. Just squish it all around in there. For men and women, this is perfect. And leave it in for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and then wash, shampoo, and you're good to go. Go back one second. Let me just see if I can stop. Let's do that. Yeah. I don't want our hair turning blonde. <laughs> we're talking here. Well, that's why you shampoo after 10 minutes, yeah. you know? 
Well, you know, the interesting thing to me mm -hmm. about this whole story mm -hmm. is that when you use vitamin C of any kind on top of skin cells, it actually exfoliates and it kills off the skin cells. That's mm -hmm. why you can use it on your face mm -hmm. as well. And it might actually work on the dandruff for the same reason. Absolutely. You feel okay? Oh, good, yeah. no, no agonizing pain? You yeah. can sit for it. Right. <laughs> so here's the thing. I want everyone out there, the entire audience, to think about things okay. they could twin, you know, pin me on, post, tweet, Instagram, all the other uses for health items that you have every day in your house. You can use hashtag Oz Innovation, and guess what? If I like them, they're gonna be on this show. I'll be right back. The new dangers of walk-in cosmetic surgery. The three procedures you should never do. Plus, new information on microwave safety. All new Dr. Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. For in case you missed it today, a plan to boost your energy in just seven days. Registered nutritionist Yuri Elkheim said, eat at least half of your plate raw to energize the gut. He argues that when you cook foods, they lose a lot of their enzymes. You need those enzymes for the energy of the gut, but you also want to have healthy digestion because when your digestion is slow, your entire body can be drained. Very simple little model, divide the plate in half. He also wants you to use sprouts to get higher concentrations of vitamins and minerals. So you can eat grains or seeds or, or in sprout form, and it makes those nutrients easier for our body to access and convert into energy. So I've got chickpea sprouts here, lentil sprouts, alfalfa sprouts back here, my radish sprouts. They come in many, many different forms. Eat them like this or just pick them on top of a meal. It puts a little bit of tang into the meal you're having. You can also check out the full plan to boost your energy in seven days on DrOz.com. Next, don't forget this great new health use that's always available out there for everyday objects. For example, today we talked about lemons as a deodorant. Now who would think if you cut a lemon in half and then rub it under your armpits, like this, uh, the citric acid may kill the odor-causing bacteria. It's certainly inexpensive and it seemed to work quite well for the guests we had on today. And you can also take a simple step. I checked it, it worked. You can take a simple step to improve your health with me. I want to encourage all of America to stand up for an hour more a day. Everyone, please stand. Just do it for me. Humor me, please. It's a very small step, literally, uh, but it turns out to have a huge impact on how you can get your healthy back. Because that's what we're about this year, bringing healthy back. Small things done every day, like standing, make a big difference. And you know what? If you do this, you lower your risk of diabetes. It can help burn off calories, which all put together leads to a longer and better life. And a little challenge for everybody, I want you to send me a picture of you standing at work, around the house, or anywhere you make the switch from sitting to standing. Just hashtag it with OzStep, and I'll talk about it later on the show. Now, I want to close with a warning. Please be careful about what you buy online, especially weight loss pills. There are some dubious people online that prey on people like you who are trying to do the right thing for your health. Sometimes they even try to make it seem like I'm endorsing their products. I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsors and partners, you can go to DrOz.com, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>